I never thought I'd hitch my future to empanadas or like anything that had to do with food. Eh, esta empanada es muy especial porque es vegana. La masa está compuesta con una mezcla de zanahoria y un poco de, de remolacha. Our business plan was really to go into offices, which is obviously a little bit ruined because offices aren't open. Come get some wine and some empanadas. As we continue to work through COVID, we just kind of want to get some awareness out. The guava and cheese, bro, that's the most fire one. Today, we're taking food, groceries to underprivileged areas throughout New York. Hey, let's start getting the veggies down. The reason that we're doing this, first and foremost, is because we just want to be a tangible expression of love to the people that may be forgotten in New York. I think it's been a time where, in the midst of the difficulty, you take the best of you to give to others. Are you sure you don't want one? My name is Carlos Santos. My mother and I, uh, we own and operate a Colombian restaurant in Porchester. We also do uh, drops and pop-ups all over New York City. The restaurant is Aquí Santa Fe. We opened about 12 years ago in 2008 in the middle of the recession. El sueño aparece eh, queriendo tener un lugar para vender café y pasteles. Eh, nos ayudó, nos impulsó a que fuéramos mejores. About five years ago, I came back from my job in the city and started helping her kind of push it forward. I saw that our empanadas were our most ordered item, uh, were the easiest to make, and were the most replicable things that we had. And so I was like, if we're just gonna sell empanadas, I kept thinking of names, and then I was just like, Nadas. Nadas is it. Nadas is really a focus on our Colombian rainbow empanadas and just selling them direct to consumer. This is Gabriela Rodriguez. She is our head chef at Santa Fe, but she's also our empanada master. This is our beef empanada. Essentially what we do is that we slow cook our chuck steak for about somewhere between six to eight hours. We have it seasoned, and then we take just some mashed potatoes, some cilantro, some scallion, mix it all together to make the actual inner mixing. But this is the first one that we made the shell colorful. The colors that we use for the shells of the empanadas, they're all vegetable based. We don't use any dyes or anything like that. The red ones or the pink ones are beet based. The orange ones are carrot based. The black ones, we use a cuttlefish ink to color that one. So we use everything that is made by nature, made by the earth. We don't shy away from being playful. Obviously we have the traditional ones, but then we have like the real Colombian ones, guava and cheese, and we have the ham and pineapple, and then we have the arequipa with coconut. Like we're willing to be playful and be very experimental with a lot of flavors. We are making our s'more empanadas right now. We're just mixing up some of this awesome natural chocolate chip with some marshmallow cream, a couple eggs, so it becomes kind of like a, like a chocolate ganache. So you can tell it's nice and sticky, nice and marshmallowy. This dough specifically, we actually take graham cracker and we mix it into the shell uh, with some brown sugar. I think it is by far my favorite to make, but also to eat and to watch people eat. And then we have our empanada right here. We start doing corporate catering in offices here in Stanford and in White Plains, and people start loving them. You know, they're cheap, they're vegan, they're gluten-free, they can be paired up with a lot of different things. And I remember thinking, okay, we have something that people really like. And I remember people DMing us or emailing us and be like, hey, these are amazing, how can we get these? I'm super excited, I'm like, let's go, 2020, this is the year. And then uh, obviously COVID hits. New York doing the right thing, goes complete preventative and, and closes. We have a plan that's no longer viable. But then once they call the pause the next day, I just remember thinking, okay, people aren't gonna be able to come to us. And I see on social media, like all these people wanting to thank you frontline workers. And in my mind that, hey, maybe it's time for you to give back rather than being profitable. And I'm like, all right, let's post this thing on our Instagram. Let's wire the website so we can take donations right on our order page. Your donations will go directly to us making meals for hospital workers and let's open it up. We did that on a Tuesday literally two days after the pause was called, and then immediately we start seeing donations. And so we go do a drop off at White Plains Hospital, and then we do a drop off at Mount Vernon, and then we do a drop off at New Rochelle, which is really the epicenter of where it started here in New York. We've essentially turned our business model from being sit down to taking all the tables, lining them up in three rows, and doing 500 meals a day, 1,000 meals a day, just packing these really, really flavorful Colombian meals with a note just saying, hey, we appreciate you, we love you. 
We want you to know that even though right now we know you're exhausted, that there are people here that really, really care and love what you're doing. Then I reach out to my pastor, Josh Kelsey, and I'm like, hey, Pastor Josh, like, really casually, would you share this on your story? Because you have a lot of followers, and like, or if you know anybody that can donate, and we just want to continue doing a good work. And immediately, he just jams back and like, how can we help? Today, we're taking food, groceries, prep food, to underprivileged areas throughout New York. So today, specifically, we're going to the East Village. There are a lot of people in New York that rely on food pantries and on food lines, but may not be able to go to them. So we try to take it to them. Again, I think it's just more about showing people that they're loved. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, how are you guys? You guys doing all right? Just give us a second to unload and we'll get started. My name is Phil Moore. I'm part of the team here at C3 NYC, one of the pastors here. We started this in April. Over the span of maybe two months, we served over 3,000 meals to frontline workers to just really be a blessing to them. We had nice little notes in them to just let them know that they're not forgotten, that we're thinking of them and praying for them. And then that just obviously led to more. And now we got food pantries all over, I think, five different neighborhoods. When I saw these families with their kids coming to food pantry lines and just knowing that they wouldn't have to cook that night, if that was a relief for them, you know, that they have groceries for the week because they can't pro probably take money from the government because of their status. Just being able to go into this, those neighborhoods and do that um, has to be the most gratifying work I've ever done. Nos hayan permitido trabajar sirviéndole a la gente en un momento donde todos querían cerrar e irse a su casa. Eh, yo no quise cerrar, yo no quise irme a mi casa. Now it's always about just shifting the model and how can we go to people in the midst of people not really going out. We're driving around New York and we're doing these hospital meetings and we're going to these neighborhoods. Like there are still people there. Like I'm ready. We have the branding, we're ready to launch. How can we just go to people's homes? And so I create the Instagram page, the first order, 30 orders. But the night before the drop, I'm just like, what can we do to make people feel that experience of just like being served? And so I was like, it's really easy. We're gonna take a table slash a box, a white linen, some flowers, and we're gonna set up these tables at people's doors. Are you Karina? Yeah, yes, Karina. Oh, Karina, buenas. Como no puedes venir a nuestra mesa, te traemos la mesa a ti, okay? Entonces ahí tienes la tarjetica que dicen cuáles salsas, ah, cuáles empanadas son cuáles, y tienes de las dos salsas. Entonces ahí tienes y ahí te dice cuáles son cuáles para que tú sepas cuáles son, okay? Para que no te me confundas. Sí, valió la pena. Perdón por la esperita, pero pues, gracias. That's it right there. Bringing the table, just carrying it to people. But that's like the reaction that we want, right? When we first started doing our first drop, which was I think the first week, second week of April, it wasn't like now where people are out grabbing drinks, da da da. It was like people weren't leaving. <laughs> we thought this could last for a while, like people were not seeing each other. We stopped at this guy in Midtown East and he literally walked out and he, he was like, you're the first person I have seen in person in a month. And I was like, that's crazy. So it was really interesting to be able to have that interaction that people were just missing. Be safe, dog. It's a mentality switch on how to make the most out of the least. Again, like we did in the, in the beginning. As phases started happening, I was just like, what if we do a pop-up? And it's just a fun experience. It's New York in the summer. It's very much trying to bring that back, trying to have people enjoy it, even though we are in a weird, tumultuous season. Just to be able to be here and be able to get some music going, get some people gathering, obviously, outdoors and uh, with social distancing and keeping everything in mind. But just, you know, getting a little bit of joy back. I find it really interesting that my mom opened the business in 2008 in the recession. And we're trying to build something in a pandemic in the beginning of what may be what we look back on as like a, a giant economic collapse. There are days where I really question whether we're going to make it. And there are days where I hold on very faithful to the things that have been spoken on us and really believe that we will make it, that we will be able to look back on this five, six, eight, ten years from now and speak about how faithful God was and how, how hard work really prevailed and how being lean and mean was the thing that we had to do. Papa, dígamelo, ¿eh? I think like, if I have to encapsulate this time, it's just gratitude. 
It really is. Like, I'm just grateful that we've had the opportunity. I'm grateful that we have such an amazing staff. I'm grateful to have the support of my mother, but also of like just the people around me. Because if it wasn't because of that, we wouldn't be here.